Hey everyone, Cody here, and welcome back to the joy, oh no, not joy, uh, how about thrill? How welcome back to the thrill of painting. I don't know if that's copyrighted or not. Anyway, today we're going to do a simple abstract painting. Now I did a, a painting kind of like the one we're going to do today in my video about using Walmart uh, art supplies. And the, the painting that we're going to do today is a simple three-piece uh, painting where it has one color on top, one color on the bottom, and then one stripe across. It's a very simple abstract painting that you can make at home. With acrylic paints, I'm going to use uh, simply Liquitex Basics, which you can get at most craft stores. Very affordable paint, very simple painting that you can do at home. Uh, we're going to do today. I hope it turns out okay with the colors that we're going to choose, uh, but we'll head over to the table and we'll talk about it uh, there. So let's head over. Okay, so let's talk about first off what we got here for supplies. We've got our uh, paint, we've got a canvas board, and then we've got some little foam brushes. I could use regular paint brushes, but I'll get to why I'm gonna use these in just a moment. And then we've got a plastic drywall scraper trowel. Um, I actually think I have a slightly smaller one somewhere, but you know what? There it is, I found it. Okay, so I've got a smaller one, so we're gonna use that and we're gonna do the scrape. Okay, so here's, here's how this painting's gonna look if you haven't watched that other video. All right, so about Two thirds of the painting is gonna be one color. And we're gonna use this lighter color, this almost sand type color, unbleached titanium. We're gonna use that for the top layer. That's gonna give us a very calming uh, top layer. And it's just gonna be easy to, you know, easy to look at. Then towards the bottom, we're gonna do this cadmium red. And we're gonna put that here. And we're going to basically meet those colors here in the middle. Very simple, very squarish, almost Rothko. Uh, but the way that we're going to approach this is not like a Rothko where it's going to be a square within a square. We're only going to do one color on top, one color on bottom. And then to finish it off, we're going to use this, uh, this burnt dumper to kind of pull across the, the two pla the places where the two meet. And that will kind of break it up, but also give us a, a little bit of distinction. Oh, I do have some black, but I think I'm almost out. So I was going to use black and that's why was kind of excited. However, uh, looking through my small bin of acrylic because I don't use it very often, I am almost out. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna proceed as planned and we're gonna use what we've got here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some gloves here. Uh, only just uh, less that I have to wash up later. You don't have to use gloves with acrylic paint. It's really not that bad. Anyway, uh, okay, so those are our colors. I, I, did, I kind of went off script here. And this is, uh, so we're gonna be using these because with these little foam brushes, it's a little more difficult to paint with these foam brushes, but it makes some very clean lines. So it'll give us uh, kind of these clean straight lines uh, that we're going for here. Uh, so that's why I'm going to use that. And then lastly, the one that we pull across, we want kind of an uneven scrape. So that's why we've got that. So let's go ahead and jump in here. We will kind of score the plastic here just to break it off. And you could do this on uh, canvas. I, I just happen to have this final canvas panel here. And it looks like... <laughs> Looks like I'm not winning here with this uh, little scraper. Yeah, that's that's not happening. All right, well, I've got scissors here. Maybe I can... There we go. All right. So let's unbox this bad boy here. All right, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so I'm gonna see if I have a pencil nearby. I don't know if I do. Looks like I've got a pen. Unfortunately, it's not it's what I was looking for, but let's see if it writes. And not even writing. 
Great. Everything is going as planned. All right. Uh, oh, here we go. I've got a pencil in here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of uh, go ahead and mark where we want the line to go. So this will be, because we're going to go across, it doesn't have to be perfect or exact, uh, but we're going to probably go right about here. Uh, this will give us kind of a, a nice kind of break point between the two colors. And it'll give us an idea of, of where we want to put it. All right, so now that we've got that division, we're going to go ahead and start at the top. We're going to start with our uh, unbleached titanium. We're going to put enough on there that it covers it. We don't need to go crazy. If you really wanted to thin it out, you could, um, but that, you know, that would be up to you. So we're going to pull it from the top and actually we're, we'll go ahead and put a lot of the paint towards the top. Uh, because we don't need it as controlled towards the top. And you could really actually, if you really wanted to make these paintings kind of interesting, because uh, if you like the technique, what you could do is you could do a couple of things. One, you could put some paste. Uh, they have like paste that you can buy that you can put onto canvas to, to give it a little bit of shape, some modeling paste, or you could add extra gesso and just kind of slather it on with, uh, with one of these little drywall scrapers. Or you could just layer uh, acrylic. So if you really want to give a painting uh, some some depth, uh, especially an acrylic painting like this, what you do, uh, the easiest way to do this, is to use a brush or you know one of these foam brushes, a scraper, and and essentially just kind of uh, lather, like slather this this paint on really thick. So instead of like thinning it out where you're really dragging the paint out, what you can do is just kind of add a ton of paint to the painting okay and you would just kind of slap it on there and, and just keep adding paint uh to the painting and you could give it some real some real interesting character like i actually don't hate that so we're gonna go ahead and uh we'll, we'll do that i mean we're, we're gonna make a decent painting here so we're gonna go ahead and uh give it some character but towards the bottom towards this kind of line this dividing line uh we're gonna kind of really square it out okay so we want the square shape so we're going to go ahead and use the edge of this and this is why i'm using this little uh, square brush we're going to use that to give us our uh, shapes so we're going to go ahead and pull it straight up from the line so that uh you know we're we're kind of following the line again it doesn't have to be perfect and there we go so now we've got some division here uh, we've got some some real character, some depth uh, with these colors. And I'll, I'll go ahead and just kind of try to get some of the excess paint off here. And it actually doesn't look half bad. I mean, I, I don't use acrylic too much, but it, it's kind of cool. It's, kinda, it's got an interesting effect. So I'm going to go ahead and place this uh, foam brush in water so that it can soak, so that that paint doesn't uh, dry on there. And I'm going to show you guys real quick uh, the texture. So that's the texture. So you can kind of see how, you know, on a painting like this, it, you know, we're, it's a simple painting, but you could still give it some, uh, some texture, some dynamic, uh, you know, some dynamicity. I, I don't know what the word would be. Anyway, let's move on to our red here. And we're going to do the same exact thing. So we're going to put our red on here. I'm going to Put enough on there. Uh, we can always add more, but I don't want to do too much up front. It looks like there's something in the painting. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start pulling this bad boy out. And we're again, we're going to start towards the bottom. And I think I picked something up. Yep. Get that out of here. All right. And then we're going to, I really like this color of red, this shade of red, this dark red. I'm always a big fan of, of dark red. I don't know why, but I just am. All right, so let's pull this out, or we'll kind of make, you can make, you know, little crosses, you can just kind of slather it, different designs, whatever you want to do. But we're going to bring this paint down to the edges. I'm really going to kind of use this texture to our advantage. All right, 
So now we're kind of getting towards the point where we're gonna kind of merge the, the two, not merge them, but where they meet. And so we're gonna kind of pull that through. And I don't know if I have enough paint, so I might actually just um, put a little bit more on here. And I, I really do like um, <clears throat> how, I really like how much uh, texture there is here. I, I'm actually really happy with that. Again, I don't I don't use uh, acrylic too often, so this is kind of it's kind of fun to use acrylic and, and get some some interesting results. All right, so now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull it really close to where it's going to meet uh, the white. We're gonna we're gonna kind of get it really close because. Uh, you know, we don't want those colors to mix. I mean, you can if you really want to. You could kind of overlap them and have a cool design. I'm not going for that this time, so that's not what I want to do. Uh, so we're we're going to go ahead and, and touch it up to the top. And again, we don't want to pull it far down. If you don't want to mix the colors, you don't want to pull it too far to kind of mix those, you know, down where the rest of this is. Uh, so we're just going to kind of keep going back and forth until we beat all of those. And now that we've got them, uh, we can kind of pull a little bit over this to kind of change up the texture here. And I think we're good. So we've got some interesting uh, textures going. Uh, again, I'll show you at the end uh, what the textures look like. But now that we've got our paint on here, the textures, kind of what we need to do now is let it dry. Because if we pull, you know, try to scrape that other color through, uh, it's going to essentially, it's going to, you know, smear the whole thing. We don't want that. We want these layers to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and use a heat gun on it. I'll, you know, kind of speed that up so you don't have to sit there and listen to the heat gun for, you know, the next five, ten minutes. And then once it's dry, then we'll go ahead and scrape our last layer on. Okay, so I don't know if it's dry 100%. Um, you can always just leave it for an hour and come back and do this. But we're going to assume that it's good. And then I just won't push very hard when I scrape. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some paint on our scraper here. And we're going to run that down. I don't know if you can see that. But we're going to run that paint down the edge here. All right. And then we're going to just simply pull it across the painting. Now I'm going to put this scraper almost at, uh, almost flat, almost, but not quite. And I'm just going to ease it across. And it was still wet because it's, uh, it's paint, it's pulling the paint. So we've already torn the paint. This is what happens if it's still wet. It'll kind of pull it. It's almost like ripping open a scab uh, that hasn't fully healed. It's it's not pretty. But we're gonna go ahead and go over it anyway. Um, you know, if we don't, if we can't keep this painting, then it is what it is. Uh, we'll just kind of move on. But let's pull this paint here. Let's see if we can pull it a little further. And pull that out. And it's not going very far. I'm kind of surprised. Just kind of line it up here. We're just gonna kind of skip it almost. All right, and we need a little bit more. And we'll just kind of go over where there already is some paint. Pull it over again. 
one last time. All right, so now I'll just kind of And that's it. Now we could do a little bit more here to kind of cover up the, the seam. If you don't want to see the little seam there, um, then you could just kind of do a little bit more work here to kind of cover it up. It's really your call if you want to see that separation between the two colors. And it did pull a, a little bit of that white because it wasn't fully dried. Uh, that's It's not too bad. Uh, going over it again with kind of the, the the extra layer of, of paint kind of seals it and, and kind of covers that up. So it's really not a big deal. Um, so again, it, it's kind of up to you if you want to cover it up completely so that you don't see uh, these two distinct layers uh, or you could kind of leave it. I think it's kind of a cool effect to see where the two, layer, the two layers uh, meet. And also over here, you can kind of see actually uh, we're, I'm done. So I, I'm done scraping and I think that that's kind of a good place. Uh, you could, if you wanted to add texture, you could also kind of add on more layers of, of that same color. So if we went over it again, um, essentially what we would be doing is just kind of adding adding more uh, textures. You kind of just lightly, just very lightly, uh, pull some more of this over the uh, what we have here. Not necessarily trying to cover up the back end, but just to add a little bit uh, more thickness to what's already here for the brown. So you could just kind of, you know, you would add, you would make it as thick as you'd want, really just, again, for, for really just uh, aesthetic, you know, for making it look thicker, to give it, again, more texture. So I, actually, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. I think it actually looked, uh, turned out kind of cool. So let me go ahead and put that in water and take these off and I'll show you guys the finished piece. Ultimately, I, I don't think it turned out too bad. The colors, uh, they were okay. And this is the final piece. So I'll take a snapshot here for the thumbnail. All right, and now we've got our finished piece. So again, you can kind of see the texture here with that, um, the bleached, unbleached titanium or whatever it was. Uh, this is, you know, the effect that you can make. So you can do this with gesso uh, before you paint or paste, or you can just put on really thick layers of acrylic and it will do the same thing. It's almost like an impasto kind of thing. Um, and I've seen artists do this where they just put on really thick, heavy coats of paint to create a certain aesthetic. And that's all we're doing here. So again, you can kind of see the, the brush works here uh, from the foam brush. And, you know, just putting on layers and layers of the same paint, just really heavily, uh, you can create an aesthetic like that. And then finally, our, our brown here with the scrape. Again, not too bad. And I, I like that it shows the two distinct layers kind of up and down across the, uh, the painting. I think that that's kind of cool because it, it gives it its own like, character and you can kind of see behind the scenes almost. So... Ultimately, I, I like the painting. I hope you guys did too. Again, simple, super easy painting that you can make at home with a few supplies. It probably wouldn't cost you more than 20 bucks or so to make this type of painting at home. Um, but yeah, ultimately, super easy painting. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys in another video. Take care. God bless. And see you then. Bye, guys.